What we're going to talk about today is the binnacle, which is an instrument used on ships to help navigate their own magnetic field, but also to help them navigate on the open ocean. My name is Elijah Otto, curator at the USS Kidd Veterans Museum. We're going to talk about it. Take the report, Mr. Binnacle. Early, early on in the seafaring tradition, cultures like the ancient Greeks, the Athenians, they didn't use celestial navigation. What they would do is they would sail out into the ocean, making sure they're within sight of land, continue in a direction, and then at dusk, beach their ships. As celestial navigation develops, opens it up more, and then as we continue on uh, with magnetism and the development of the compass, realize that's a really good idea to start putting those on ships to help them navigate, and then again, broaden out the way and how far a ship can move and know where it is. Because uh, that's a really big problem out on the open ocean. Everything looks like the ocean. Polar ice caps have melted, covering the earth with water. They realize they start putting compasses on ships, they start having a problem. The magnetic field of the ship itself, which can house a whole bunch of iron nails, um, cannon shot or ballast, even just simple rocks or sand as ballast, all of that has its own magnetic field. Too much iron on your blood. When the helmsman, which is the person who's usually using this along with the navigator or, or captain on board a ship, realizes that it's not pointing toward magnetic north. So they realize there's a deviation. And then with the rise of magnetism in the scientific field, realize that the magnetic field of the ship is affecting the compass itself. The magnetic field would confuse our sensors. So those two things kind of go hand in hand in terms of their development. One of the earlier patents put forth for a binnacle was in 1854 by a guy named John Gray. And then they realized, hey, we got to solve this magnetic problem. So what he originally did was put the compass inside a gimbal, which is a little structure that keeps the compass flat, even while the ship is pitching and rolling. And he puts brass around it because brass does not give off a magnetic field. It's a non-ferrous metal. I know I'm saying that correctly. Non-ferrous. Don't say that in the comments. Don't try it. And then he also used brass throughout most of its construction. Realizes trying not to use iron uh, or other ferrous metal. Later on, it gets improved one more time by a guy named Baron Kelvin or William Thompson. You may know him as the guy who does the Kelvin temperature system. He developed these two magnetic balls, or Kelvin's balls. The whole purpose of this, again, is to keep the magnetic field of the ship from interfering with the magnetic field that the compass is relying on, which is the Earth's magnetic field. The ship's giving off a magnetic field. I'll pretend my arms are the ship magnetic field. And these iron orbs, or these Kelvin orbs, are giving off their own magnetic field. And what happens is the ship's magnetic field hits our magnetic field on the iron orb, and then helps distort it. This way it doesn't go into this compass. The magnetic field. It's construction for a binnacle. You do have to be kind of careful with this construction. What you have to use is non-ferrous metals. So what we have here is everything is going to be made out of brass, except for the iron orbs. Compass is basically freestanding. It's usually placed in what's called the pilot house, or at least somewhere within sight of the helmsman on flesh decks uh, type ships or yachts or something like that. It's usually posted on the highest deck. But as ships get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're moving away from these cogs or these sailing vessels and the galleys and you're getting into these really, really big ships, you're going to need multiple binnacles. Usually you'll have a binnacle near a helmsman or pilot house, and then you'll usually have a binnacle somewhere else uh, throughout the ship, but you also want it in a tall place, so it could be near a mast or something like that. And this way they can check their readings with each other. So they'll have a relay system in between each binnacle to make sure that they're all pointing correctly. Or and if they do have some sort of deviation, they can work it out. I am reconfiguring the sensor relays on the ship. On the USS Kid, we have two binnacles. The first binnacle is located in the pilot house of the ship, and the helmsman is right next to it on its starboard side. The other binnacle, originally in its 1943 configuration, was placed on the second or after smokestack on a platform. It's high. It's away from the magnetic field. This way we can get a good accurate reading. After our kamikaze hit and our refitting in late 45, we end up putting the binnacle on the deck itself, right in front of the second smokestack, and we create what's called an emergency bridge. So in case something happens to the forward part of the ship, we have a backup way to navigate. This is a more modern 
binnacle. Binnacles are actually still used today on ships. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. We do have some quick facts for you, some fun facts for you. Everyone loves fun facts. So the binnacle list is a pretty fun colloquial term that's come along. Uh, originally, the Royal Navy, British Navy, in the 16, 1700s, they referred to their sick call or row call for a sick bay as the binnacle list. The binnacle list would be posted near the binnacle or near the main mast on a ship. Uh, then also a list was given to the captain, and so that's why it's called the binnacle list. American Navy, of course, we've adopted a lot of the Royal Navy's traditions, so the American Navy still calls it the binnacle list uh, today. Next time you're out of work because you're sick, just say you're on the binnacle list. Well then, we better keep it to ourselves. The other thing is, modern ships, with all of their advanced technology and GPS and electronic navigation, are actually still required to have a binnacle. Uh, in today's day and age, everything's got to have a mechanical backup, especially when you're on a ship out in the middle of the open ocean. Nothing's free in water world. This just is a nice little fail safe and override. Always good to have a backup system. As we talked about how to navigate a ship, why don't you try navigating through a ship? Click on this video right here. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.